Hey guys, Monica here with the Auburn Hill Homestead on a very blustery, frigid day in Northeast Kansas. Um, it's hard to believe that this past week, middle of the week, I was sitting on my front porch enjoying the sunshine and 60 degree weather. Um, and today is way different than that. And if you can see back there how we've got snow and gale force winds. Um, but that's Kansas. You know, I'm from the suburbs of Chicago and they call that the Windy City. And that, <laughs> nothing compares to Kansas from what I've seen in far, as far as the winds go. And the major change in temperatures, um, you know, when we first moved down to Kansas 15 years ago, um, it was a summer of 100 degree days. I was definitely not used to that. And then um, a few that was down closer to Wichita. And then after living in the Wichita area for five years, we move up to Northeast Kansas and our first winter in Northeast Kansas, we had feet of snow and below zero days all the time. And that can literally be in one season or like this past week within a few days. So Kansas weather is definitely crazy. Um, but, you know, I, I started a homesteading channel and I've covered a few things, but one of them has been nothing and I haven't covered gardening yet. Um, so I figured today would be a good day to sit down and dream of that future spring garden and um, go through the seeds that I've ordered and that have come in and some of the ones that I've saved over from last year. Um, but just dreaming of future gardens to come. My garden is definitely a polyculture garden. I plant a little bit of everything. Um, I also try to do companion planting, which that could be a whole separate video. Um, there's a lot with that. I also use organic fertilizers and blood meal. Um, and have had, I had great success with that last year. Uh, most of the seeds that I order come from Baker Creek Seeds out of Missouri. Um, I just have had good success with them and I like that they're all heirloom varieties, really cool. Uh, and as you can see here, this is my seed saver box. This is a photograph box that you can buy at craft stores, but it's great. It's nice and airtight. There's double duty and I even have separation spots here. These are pretty much duplicate seeds from what I'm going to show you. Um, but yeah, that's a great way to store seeds. Keep them cool and dry and save from year to year. Because if you do that and you save your seeds properly, they can last years. So first up, I'm going to go over what I'm going to be planting early on. Cool weather. Lettuce, of course. Um, Buttercrunch lettuce. Arugula. I love arugula. Um, kale, always a staple. And then um, these are all new seeds that I bought that I've never tried before, so it's going to be a first time for that, and hopefully we have great success. But I bought Parisian carrots. They're small, which is good for the harder soil that we have here. Um, new Kuroda carrots, again, small. Couple cabbages. I have Brunswick, and then Red Express cabbage. This has a pretty quick turnaround. You, you get your crop out pretty quick, so that'll be nice to have in the spring. Um, early purple sprouting broccoli. Okay, and I'm not sure I'm going to pronounce this correctly, but according to the catalog, this green is a cross between spinach kale. It's very mild. Please, if, if you want to correct me down in the comments on my pronunciation, I'd appreciate it. But I would say chai jimsai, not quite sure. But this was rated very high on their website. So I figured if it's a cross and it's mild, we'll go for it and try it. And then of course, sugar daddy peas. I know peas are kind of a lot of work for the crop that you get out, but I just really love sitting out on the deck on a nice evening this past year. My husband, my oldest daughter, and I sat out shelling peas, and she'd been away at college, and it was just a lovely time to sit and talk. So, 
So that's going to be cool weather, hopefully March, early March, but we'll see what the weather does. Um, so my warm weather, you know, hot summer days, I have sweet corn. It doesn't have the tag anymore, but because I planted this last year, it was delicious. Again, Baker Creek. I'm going to try the Lesia pepper, and this is a sweet pepper. It's shaped like a small little heart. I thought it was so cute. So we'll see how that goes. Um, striped japonica corn. This is more um, for me going to be used for decorations come the fall. Um, you'll see here in a little bit when I get talking in, about squashes. Um, yes, we eat a lot of the squashes. However, uh, I am huge into fall, see, the fall season, and Halloween is my favorite holiday. So I do a lot of growing my own decorations. And this past year, you can ask anybody who came by, my entire front porch was covered in pumpkins from my garden. I didn't have to go out and buy any of them. Um, we also have Kalima beans. And I thought these were really neat and just to try dragon tongue beans. It's just such a cool color. And you know, we're trying to get as many colors of the rainbow into the diet as possible. And two colors in one, that's great. Um, I have last year's okra. Um, saved just um, that was red okra and then I also went ahead and bought Okinawa pink um, I also have Chinese string eggplant this is supposed to be tender um, and easier to cook with I have a few people in my household that are not big on eggplants so maybe I can convert them with this hopefully we'll try and then this is a bag that I saved but these were just the bomb um, mucho nacho jalapenos. They were large, not overly spicy. We ate a lot of those. Tomatoes and cucumbers. I have sweetheart cherry, which you can't see the picture, but they're sweetheart cherry um, from Baker Creek. So and I, the rest are just all ones I've saved. I had great success, so I went ahead and saved the seeds, and I even tried sprouting them after I saved them and they sprouted right up, so we'll be planting them. But I have Roma, Celebrity Tomato, and then these are cucumbers that were from Baker Creek and they're Suyo Long. Everybody I shared these with absolutely loved them. They are a large, skinny cucumber, kind of like an English cucumber, and they just had fantastic taste. They pickled really well, so that is a definite repeat. For fruits, I'm going to try my hand at a couple different strawberries, Regina and Yellow Wonder Wild. So again, I'm interested to see how these taste compared to the typical red strawberries. Um, ground cherry. And then Sugar Baby Watermelon. This is from last year and I went ahead and saved them. This was a great watermelon, but the take all watermelon that if you can get past the color of this watermelon it is an orange color so when people see it they think squash or cantaloupe and then they go to taste it and they're like oh what was that that's so weird but the taste of this is absolutely divine best watermelon I've ever had and it produced like crazy so again we have kind of clayish hard soil here so what I did was when I planted these seeds I added um, a bunch of sand to the hole and these sprouted great. I had great production and the taste was just fantastic. It is called a tangelo watermelon. Last thing we're going to cover are the gourd squashes pumpkins. So I have small mixed ornamental. These are the equivalent. This is from a southern exposure, oops, southern exposure seed exchange and when it says uh, gourds, it's, they're small mixed ornamentals. So like when you go to the pumpkin patch and you see that big bin with all those little weird gourds, this is what it was. And they produced, the plants produced wonderfully. I had a great mix of all different types of gourds that were great for using for decoration. Um, I have pie pumpkin seeds that I have saved. And then Connecticut field pumpkin. That's from Baker Creek. Okay, I'm again pronouncing this is probably not going to go well. Mesquite de Provence. 
Let's go UD Provence. I am. <laughs> I studied German in high school and have continued to study it on Duolingo, so French is not my language at all, but Mesquite de Provence. But I thought that was just the coolest pumpkin. So even if I only get like one or two, because they're actually very large, I'll be happy with that. We'll see how it goes. Um, birdhouse gourds. And then of course, typical summer zucchini. Um, and I have saved, I call them warts pumpkins. They have witches warts all over the pumpkins. They produced like mad. And I had probably 50 of these pumpkins. They grow to be about that big anyway. And you can cook them and eat them. They were really good in pies and stuff, so. Um, and then the last, these are saving over. And this is um, from Baker Creek again, Tahitian melon squash. Now you hear melon and you think, mm, fruit. No, these are like a long neck butternut squash. And I have four of them still saved in my basement and we've just been going through them a little at a time. So I'm going to, I'm going to save more seeds from it um, when I go to cook the next one. But again, they were prolific um, and highly recommend them. This is just a small sampling of what I'm gonna have out there come spring. I always end up finding something else that I like and wanna add in and do that. Um, and I typically end up with three gardens, three, yeah. Um, because I'll start one in the you know cool weather spring, that stuff will die off and as that's transferring out, go for the warm weather stuff and then um, transfer to a fall garden too, back to the cool. Um, so I do have grow lights and I start most of these indoors well ahead of schedule, depending on what the seed is. And so anyway, I'm dreaming of starting the garden, although I am enjoying the snow. We finally got some snow, although it's a dusting, but you know what? I'll take what I can get. If you've liked what you've seen, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video and have a great rest of your week. Bye.